Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. As you know, Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is precision agriculture. And on today's call, we are joined by Emma Weston, the CEO of AgriDigital. The AgriDigital platform is a cloud-based, multi-participant commodity management platform that allows everyone from farmers to buyers to storage operators and even consumers to interact and trade directly with each other. Built on a blockchain backbone, the platform allows participants to access, to access a single live view of contracts, deliveries, prices, orders, inventory, consignments, payments, and more with digital tracking and real-time notifications to keep everyone in the loop. An entirely digital ecosystem, AgriDigital is bringing new transparency to the grain supply chain. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in AgriDigital's market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you are a sophisticated business person or ag professional who understands their market and the challenges and opportunities that AgriDigital may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. Finally, a few process comments while the poll is running. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help AgriDigital find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you are all on mute. However, you can use the chat window to ask a question and we will have some time at the end for Q&A during which you can raise your hand or type in a question um, in the Q&A pane and we will uh, ask Emma directly. Um, also, you can raise your hand and we can unmute you and you can ask Emma directly. Finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I am pleased to introduce Emma Weston, the CEO of AgriDigital. Take it away, Thanks Emma. So much, Tom. Thanks, Tom. And welcome, everyone. Um, I think it's good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you're calling in from. Um, if there is anyone calling in from Australia like me, you can probably hear the Aussie accent, then it's uh, it's definitely good morning. So you may even get to see the sunrise um, behind me as we as we talk. Well, I'll get straight into it. So my name's Emma Weston, as Tom said. Thanks for the kind introduction, Tom, and for having me as part of AgriFood Conversations um, and AgriDigital as well. I'm the CEO and a co-founder at AgriDigital, and we are a ag tech company that is building out the digital grain supply chain. So I'm here to talk to you about that today, as well as specifically what we're doing. Okay, let's get straight into it. Um, I'm, I'm, Cause I'm definitely looking forward to questions at the end. So I wanna make sure we leave some time for that. Um, so not only um, am I a founder at AgriDigital but also a farmer and you know, here's a, a, little, a little picture, a little photo opportunity, uh, me with my two co-founders, Bob and Ben. Um, all of us have been working across the supply chain for a combined around about 90 years now. So quite a bit of gray hair in there. And we've done, we've done everything from not only growing grain um, and the grain supply chain is definitely where our expertise is all the way through to technical servicing and market. Um, so definitely working from both ends of the supply chain. So when thinking about building out AgriDigital, I guess we were really focused around three core problems. One is around making sure that farmers are able to interact into the supply chain um, and particularly to ensure that we're de-risking supply chain and using digital technologies to do that for farmers. Uh, we're also focused on not just offering best in class uh, technology to farmers in the broader supply chain, uh, which Tom alluded to, but also making sure that there is access to finance. These two barriers we saw as being very um, very much what is separating the larger multinationals um, playing in supply chain um, from the small to medium enterprise, whether that's a farmer, whether that's a trader, an end use consumer, so a, a mill, a feedlot, a dairy, um, a processor, or indeed a storage operator or elevator. And finally, there is, of course, the connection with the consumer. Um, increasingly, our supply chains have become so complex, so convoluted and complicated and somewhat obscure 
that actually farmers and consumers and everyone in the middle is quite disconnected from each other. So one of the advantages of going digital first with a supply chain is being able to create demand signals that can be transmitted through the, through the supply chain. Um, and this obviously assists consumers to know where their food comes from, but it also assists everyone else in the supply chain to understand the consumer signal. So supply chains, as I said, uh, they are complex. They are characterized in terms of the agricultural supply chain and particularly grain supply chain by excessive amounts of manual uh, paperwork um, and processes. The data itself is fragmented and this makes supply chains quite risky to participate in. Um, from the areas that we really work in, in terms of technology at the trade and the physical inventory level, the trade and the finance components of supply chain are quite separate. And this makes supply chains inefficient, but it also makes it difficult to access finance um, at different parts and to collateralize your grain assets. Uh, and that's where AgriDigital comes in. So I thought I'd just give a really quick overview um, for those who may not be completely aware of how grain supply chain works, um, how much if effort is involved just to make one sale of grain and the different counterparties um, and processes that are involved. So as I've been talking, that's been playing across the screen. And this is just the sale of grain from a grower delivered into a, a buyer. Um, and then noting that the buyer can then obviously sell that on into the supply chain further. There are a number of different transactions that take place and all of those transactions have to occur um, in a framework that enables data as well as money to be passed in between the counterparties. And so what we do at AgriDigital is effectively transform that into a digital platform to make that easier, more efficient, um, and to be able to track and trace every aspect of that physical grain movement uh, in real time in a digital platform. So there are three underlying components of that really, and that is the contract of sale between a grower and a buyer, uh, the delivery of the physical grain into the buyer and obviously the payment from the buyer to the grower. But involved in that are also banks, there are logisticians, so carriers or truck um, providers involved in carrying that grain. There are regulators that are now involved in recording data about that grain um, or other commodity. And so this has made this quite complex. It's made it quite heavy from a supply chain perspective. Um, and we basically remove that and make that a lot easier. We do that across the whole supply chain. Um, and in digitizing the supply chain, one of the um, key aspects that is an advantage of a digital supply chain is the ability to share information across the supply chain. Um, and so that means not just uh, the farmer benefits, but everyone through the supply chain can benefit as well. Okay, let's just keep moving along. So the opportunity as we see it is the way that we combine technology and capital to power end-to-end -end inventory management. And at the end of the day, AgriDigital and our flagship product for farmers, which was what we have recently launched into the US, um, is an inventory management platform that enables farmers and others to not only manage that inventory from all the way from the field or the paddock in through to payment for that grain, but also to access finance um, to support cash flow needs as they need it rather than having to sell that grain in order to access cash flow. So this enables farmers to actually unpack the, the, the conundrum, if you like, of needing cash flow and having to sell sometimes into a down market, but able to hold grain and then get that financed through collateral, um, collateralization of that asset. So if we're thinking about how big is this market, it is a large market. Um, obviously, total grain production globally is huge, uh, but when we're looking at not just the grain production, but particularly the finance aspects of grain, there are three main areas that we focus on at AgriDigital. So one is post-harvest finance, that tends to be just for farmers and particularly for farmers who are storing grain on farm, um, allowing them to collateralize those assets, as I've said. But we also offer buyer finance in Australia um, and increasingly trade finance. So AgriDigital has not only a digital platform that connects all players across the supply chain, but also one-touch finance out of that platform uh, for participants in the supply chain, no matter who they are. At the moment, that finance is only offered in Australia, but looking to be able to launch that into the US and Canada in the coming year. So when thinking about AgriDigital, where do we fit in uh, the ag tech ecosystem or supply chain more generally? Well, we see ourselves as building um, an infrastructure piece uh, in terms of the digital grain supply chain that's emerging. 
So we're really technology and financing combined. And from our perspective, we really do think that the solution needs to be global. It needs to be multi-commodity based. So we're not looking to just stop at grain, although that's, although that's where we've started. And the advantage of digital is that all participants can be connected through the supply chain. The way that we've gone about this in terms of our um, a really kind of clear three point strategy is that the first, the first component of building a digital supply chain is actually to automate and connect inventories. Um, and so that is the technology platform that we have built out. The second point for us is then enabling off that inventory information, the ability to access commodity backed finance. And off the back of having great technology in play, plus access to finance, which is both working as well as growth capital, uh, then farmers and others in the supply chain, not just farmers, are able to build out sustainable supply chains. So there are many players at the moment really looking at the sustainability aspects of supply chains um, and really kind of starting at the top end of this um, horizon view on building a digital grain supply chain. We're actually starting at the very basic of actually organizing global grain infantries and making sure that they can be leveraged into a sustainable supply chain over time. We do that through four main products currently, and we're really focused at the agricultural end of the supply chain. So on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see a pretty typical grain supply chain there, all the way from farmer through to consumer. That would be familiar to many of you. Uh, we really are focused and are very, very good at what we do from the farmer through to you know, even the processing component, but we would call that the agricultural part of the supply chain, maybe rather than the food part of the supply chain. One of the things that I've learned in 25 years in supply chain is that unfortunately, although we are in an agri-food conversation today, um, agricultural part of the supply chain and the food part of the supply chain are actually not very well connected. They pretty much don't talk at all. And so being able to get consumers connected all the way through complex supply chains like grain uh, is, is actually very, very difficult. And most parties actually don't know who comes before them, other than who comes before them and who comes immediately after them. They may not know anyone else in the supply chain, let alone being able to track data all the way through the supply chain. So our products, although we have four particular products that are built for um, uh, certain segments of the supply chain, so be that farmers, be that buyers of grain, brokers of grain or consultants, um, and elevators or storage operators, each of those interfaces sits on a universal data layer. Uh, and it is the universal data layer that effectively is powering our ability to build out across the supply chain. So today I'm actually going to focus in on Waypath. So the number one on your screen there. Um, and that is an app that is built for farmers. Um, it enables farmers to effectively track and trace their grain all the way from the paddock as we would call it in Australia or the field um, at harvest all the way through to payment. And we'll go into that in a little more detail. The reason that I've just picked that one is that how, that's how we've uh, launched in the US. So we have customers in the US using Waypath. Um, they actually picked that up out of Australia and kind of pulling us into, into North America now, which is a nice way to be. Um, we would love to be, or I would love to be there, um, maybe even in St. Louis today. Um, but of course, with uh, COVID constraints at the moment, that's still a little difficult. But we do have a team on the ground based in Bozeman, Montana, uh, which for those who may not know, is um, the largest wheat growing state in the US. So let's look at Waypath in a little more detail to try and understand what we're building out from a digital supply chain perspective. Um, and sometimes I will say that farmers are not always connected to the supply chain in a way that enables them to participate uh, downstream effectively. So Waypath is one of the tools that we're building out to enable them to do that. Um, look, I've just got a little bit of um, traction and growth slides here. I think we can probably skip over that, but we have been, um, before kind of getting into Waypath in more detail, just to let everyone know that we launched our first products a few years ago now, so that was 2017. Um, these are all US figures, but since that time, we've had about $4 billion in grain processed through our platform, which equates to about 1.2 um, trillion bushels of grain. Uh, that's been converted on a wheat basis. Um, we don't just do wheat, we do all grains, including rice, oil seeds, um, pulses, legumes, etc. And our supply chain finance fund has grown um, to the extent that we've now financed uh, just a little shy of um, uh, $45 million um, US across um, grain stocks in Australia. And we've got around about 8,000 customers. Most of those customers are farmers, but we also, because we have those other products, uh, have brokers, traders, end-use consumers, 
um, elevators and storage operators as customers as well. In Australia, which is where we launched, um, and that is where I spent the vast part of my career, as did my, uh, my co-founders, and that's where I farm as well. Um, I'm not actually at the farm today. I'm in Sydney, but I, I would have loved to have been doing this from the farm. Um, we now have around about 10% market share. So um, about 10% of all grain grown in Australia now goes through an agri-digital product in some way. And looking forward to growing that market share into the US as well. Uh, this is a photo that's taken on my farm. This was uh, last harvest. And yeah, just to put a little bit of color back into the presentation for you all. So let's dig into Waypath for farmers a little bit more. Um, so Waypath is an app that AgriDigital has built out that really enables at its simplest farmers to track and manage grain from the field all the way into the supply chain. Now, increasingly farmers are doing that in a couple of ways. They are doing that in the field, but they're also doing that in the office. Um, a lot of our early adopter customers in the US are multi-team and multi-land holding operations. So they're probably in the kind of the medium to larger size of the farmer group. And for some of those farmers, we do represent the last mile digitization. So they're farmers who have focused in on digitizing aspects of their on-farm and agronomy uh, and are now looking to be able to independently act in the supply chain and make sure that they can track and uh, basically optimize their grain stock allocation into the supply chain. So what Waypath does at a glance, and this is all done off your mobile tablet, but also off a desktop application in the office, if that's what suits, you're able to track every truck that leaves your field in real time. So it's a fantastic harvest management tool. You can manage those deliveries into your on-farm storage or third-party storage if it's leaving the farm. Uh, you can integrate with your WayBridge so that we're able to collect uh, quantity as well as quality information if there is instrumentation on farm that connects to grain quality uh, and that feeds directly into the app. The app is also connected and integrated with cloud accounting platforms like Xero. So if you're actually transacting your grain, you're able to do that in a way that it makes your back office efficient by getting those accounting entries done for you. If you are segregating grain on farm, either uh, for your own purposes or, you know, increasingly there are farmers who are storing on behalf of others um, or who may be buying in grain to blend up against a contract, all of that can be managed within the Waypath app. Uh, and you're able to track not only your inventories, but also the quality of that inventory so you can optimize the delivery onto a contract. Those contracts can be executed straight out of Waypath. Um, or you can actually bring those contracts um, from third parties into Waypath as the one storage point. So you can see all of your grain delivery obligations out of the one app, no matter who the buyer may be. And I hope for most farmers out there, they're dealing with more than one buyer. Um, but uh, but if, if not, then it, you know, it acts as a companion app um, to, to whatever your buyer may be offering you. Um, importantly, once all of that information has been aggregated, you're able to track that back to the field and have a look at really what that field yielded from a revenue perspective, not just from a quantity of grain perspective. And that gives you gross revenue per farmer per paddock, um, which enables you to then make you know, optimal decision making for uh, the year ahead, as well as to report to landlords um, if you do have any. And of course, most of our farms, as I said, are medium to large farms. Um, and therefore, there are teams of people involved. And so uh, with Waypath, you're able to basically allocate tasks across the team, but also manage um, permission levels so that not everybody in the team is seeing all of the information. Importantly, this enables auditability of all of the processes and workflows. Uh, but it also means that um, as the farmer in control of that team, you're able to actually get team members to do particular aspects of the work um, more efficiently. Uh, and finally, I've spoken about finance, but of course, with Waypath, you're able to then collateralize your grain to access uh, finance. So that's what Waypath does. It's a really simple app, um, as I said, um, but part of what is actually quite a complex supply chain that AgriDigital is building out a suite of products um, across that supply chain. The way that those products are connected is through the data layer that AgriDigital manages on behalf of all users. So I thought I'd just end relatively quickly with, um, you know, the customer, because that's why we do what we do. Uh, we do have customers across Australia and the US. We've got around about 8,000 customers, as I said earlier, um, at various stages of, um, of working across the product. 
Um, I think from the the farmer aspect in, in the US, and there's a number of case studies available on our website if anybody's interested, or of course you can ping me directly and I can um, put you in touch with customers or um, provide more information here. But in the words of our customers, really what our customers have been looking for is to be able to enter a supply chain in a way that they are in control, not just in control of their commodity, but in control of the information about that commodity and the decision-making about that commodity. And that's what Waypath is really seeking to do, but that's in fact what any digital grain supply chain product should be doing. Because when we think about supply chain, it's really nothing more than physical inventory, financial flows and data flows. And all of that information and transactionality should be happening in the one platform. That's what digital allows us to do. So uh, if we take a, a customer like Mike Sullivan um, based in Arkansas, one of the areas that he had been really looking to do was enter the supply chain um, by being able to take all of the investment and the information that he had made in optimizing his on-farm arrangements and to be able to push that into the supply chain and towards consumers. Um, and that's why he talks here about being able to communicate with his stakeholders. So I think one of the really pleasing aspects of where supply chain and where agriculture is at now is the willingness of many farmers to want to move beyond the farm gate. And what we're at AgriDigital really about is enabling farmers to not just be pure on-farm farmers anymore, but in fact, to be business people in agri agriculture working across the whole supply chain. So I'm actually gonna wrap it up there, Tom, um, and I'm happy to take any questions that maybe uh, listeners or attendees may have. Great, Wyma. thank you so much for walking us through a great presentation. Um, I'm going to stop sharing so that everyone can see us easily, if that's okay. My, but my details are there. And um, obviously, this was recorded, Tom, as well as, you know, we can get this out to anybody who might be interested if need be. Great. Well, um, thank you so much, Emma. That was great. Um, as many of you know, now is uh, Q&A time. There's a couple ways to, to do that. You can raise your hand and we can unmute you, or you can type a question in the Q&A pane and I will read it allowed to Emma. Um, but Emma, I'd like to start with um, how can the folks on the call and those listening retrospectively help you? What are, what are you looking for in terms of a, a market network um, boost? Yeah, thanks so much, Tom. It's, it's always good to make sure there's a clear ask in there, isn't it? So, you know, really appreciated the opportunity to share what we're doing at AgriDigital and specifically with the way that Waypath is operating. Um, I think we don't want to shy away from the fact that at AgriDigital, although we've built out a really good market position in Australia, um, we're still relatively early stage and, you know, an early market entrant into the US and Canada. So one of the ways that we are looking to get Waypath out to as many farmers as possible and to have as much impact as we can across the supply chain is through um, not just direct sales to farmers, but also channel partner um, program that we've put in place. So we're about to announce our first channel partner coming on board. Um, so stay tuned for that in the next uh, couple of days. But we're really interested in who else you think might be a good distribution or channel partner for us. Um, we also have a couple of pilots that we're about to, uh, to launch in the US. Uh, so one is about sustainable um, soy into uh, the livestock sector. And the other one is around low carbon grain. So starting to tie in consumer signals around sustainability back to the farmer and being able to track all of that through. So if you hear of anyone who is involved in similar pilots or is looking for the capability to track grain, which is where we are still only playing in the grain supply chain at this point, um, across the supply chain, we'd love to hear about it. We're very collaborative. Um, we do believe that the challenges of supply chain are not going to be solved by one technology company alone. And therefore we're looking for great partners um, as well as customers. So that would be my, my main ask at the moment. Terrific. And I'm curious about um, sales cycle and um, the reasons to date that that farmers have said no. Um, so I feel free to take those as you as you wish. But but curious about you know in particular, I guess I'm wondering if if um, you know the blockchain technology is scaring folks off, um, and and also kind of time to sale and and uh, sales cycle. Yeah, absolutely. So um, sales cycles are actually relatively tight from, I mean, there's obviously a brand awareness piece that we need to build out. 
um, and there is still, you know, reputational trust in market. Um, that's something that we've, you know, and over decades in, in Australia, but recognizing that we're relatively new in the US. So, um, you know, I think there, there definitely is some, some kind of brand, um, you know, brand awareness that we need to be building. But on, off the back of, um, you know, word of mouth recommendations from existing customers, as well as increasing brand awareness in the US, once we actually bring um, customers on board, and this is just specifically farmers for Way Park in the US, the cycle has been relatively short. So it tends to be, you know, farmers sign up to a freemium version of Waypath. Um, there's 30 days in which to kind of make a decision um, around whether or not to continue. And, you know, most of our customers um, tend to be able to make that decision, you know, within two to three weeks. Um, I think there is definitely in agriculture more generally, um, more favorable sales times that are uh, somewhat connected to seasonality within the agricultural cycle. Um, and so that's just something that I think all ag techs need to, to navigate. Um, the other part of the question, Tom, was around blockchain. And, you know, I actually didn't mention blockchain at all in my presentation. Um, you know, we really do think that whilst blockchain is a really important part of our, the way that we're building out our back end and our infrastructure um, and capability into a whole of supply chain view, um, it's something that for most participants, frankly, not just farmers, but but everyone, you know, they'd probably prefer was just piping in the background. Um, and I think the job of a good technology company is not to be onboarding uh, customers to a technology, it's to be onboarding customers to a product. Um, and, you know, that product really should be easy to use irrespective of the technology that's powering it. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we are blockchain pragmatists and, you know, rather than purists, and I don't really make an apology for that. Sure, absolutely. How do you think of competitors in this space and, and who would you be, um, who are you selling against on a routine basis? Yep. So that's a really good question. Um, previous to AgriDigital, most software in this space has been built out to be target customer specific. So uh, software that is for farmers, software that is for traders, software that is for elevators. Um, and of course, a lot of that early software was on premises um, and that is still in place. So there are definitely, um, there's definitely some, you know, incumbency that is in the market uh, in terms of uh, existing software players, but not too many that have been able to build out um, a platform approach to supply chain, which is a key differentiator for us. And there is no one who has built out a, a platform um, that is an end-to-end -end platform across the supply chain that also offers finance. So we have quite a competitive advantage in the way that we have built out um, the product and the services that we offer. But routinely, what we would find is that the biggest competitor is probably pen and paper um, at the farm level and spreadsheets. So yeah. they have some really good advantages um, that they're essentially free, um, but they obviously have some, some clear limitations in being able to share and leverage information as well as to create a pool of data that then can give insights for optimized decision making. Um, and really, I think that farmers and others are just on a journey um, through that process. Uh, we're here to support that. Um, we're not here to convert those who are comfortable with their spreadsheets. Um, you know, we're really here to just offer an alternative. So, but I think that's that's definitely the biggest competitor that we find. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I'm seeing if there's any questions coming in. Um, Tell me about goals for the next 12 months. Where do you, where would you like to be? Um, is there a new product or a new um, focus from a, you know, commodity standpoint that you're, that you're focusing on or what, what, what do you see as uh, your, your guidepost over the next 12 months? Look, as I showed in the presentation, the grains market's a huge market. So there's no burning requirement for us to be able to expand beyond, uh, beyond grain. Um, really our focus for the next 18 months is doubling down um, and consolidating what we've done in Australia, but increasingly our focus is North America. Um, so, you know, I am hopeful kind of post uh, vaccination at some point to, um, to, to be back in the States. That's where I was in March last year um, before it, it obviously made sense to, to head back home um, and, and to the family. So I'll be back in the US um, continuing to build out the team. That's definitely going to be a focus for us. Um, in terms of, you know, some milestone um, events that 
uh, you know, listeners can, can look out for and kind of track us against and see how we're going. Um, as I said, we're about to sign up our first uh, distribution partner. I'm looking to have 10 distribution partners signed up by the end of the year. I think that would definitely happen, particularly if I can get over to the US because we've done a lot of pre-work in the space and we've, you know, we've built out a lot of those networks and connections. Um, so I think that distribution or channel partner net network is going to be crucial for us. Um, the second thing is building out the supply chain finance fund, Tom. So at the moment, that is a relatively small fund. We're looking to have that built out to around about $250 million, um, by the midpoint next year. Um, and a lot of what the, the work that we're doing behind the scenes is really being able to enable that finance on an event-driven basis. So whenever a transaction happens in the supply chain, to be able to fund that transaction rather than trying to fund a whole year, and having to actually pay line fees, um, you know, across a whole year without necessarily being drawn. So um, the growth in the supply chain finance fund um, will be a crucial one for us. Um, and I guess the third area that we're directing our attention to is around sustainable supply chains. So I spoke about those couple of pilots that we will have in market. Um, one of the areas, and this does leverage blockchain, is we'll be looking to build a sustainability token so this will take sustainability information that may be produced on farm or elsewhere in the supply chain um, and being able to pair that in a data sense on chain to uh, the digital asset representation of the physical grain. So this will enable feeding of sustainability, uh, and I'm just using that quite broadly, um, information to carbon markets, but also um, more, bro more broadly in and of itself. This will then create a tradable piece of data um, alongside tradable physical inventory. So we're pretty excited about that, um, that kind of milestone over the next 12 to 18 months. Great. A couple questions have come in. Um, an anonymous attendee asks, does Waypath touch the transaction at all between farmer and buyer? Yeah, well, thank you, anonymous. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna, I think, Maybe from that, it means is Waypath the it's Waypath the generator of that transaction, or just a recording of that transaction? Perhaps is the way I'm interpreting that question. But if I haven't got that right, then you know, please like just jump on and um, add some more information around there. So between um, the buyer and the seller, Waypath can both be uh, the automated process that enables that buy, sell contract or that transaction to happen. So that can all happen within Waypath and be generated within Waypath. Or we also build the flexibility that if all parties are not on Waypath or an agri-digital product, that it can just record the results of that transaction. So, you know, we've really built, built out the capability for both just recognizing that when building out a network of users, there are, um, th there does need to be flexibility in how um, the user is able to, to, to bring on information into Waypath. Um, so we can actually do both. I don't know if that answers the question. I hope it does. But once again, just to recap, you can basically generate a contract um, and therefore a buy-sell transaction in Waypath, or you can merely record that that transaction happened uh, so that you can track that as against your inventory as a farmer. Great. And from another anonymous attendee, from a buyer processor, how can this work to manage positions? Yep, so um, the right product is not Waypath for the, the buyer or the processor, it's the agri-digital platform itself. So buyers, processors, whether they're um, crushers, feedlots, dairies, mills, um, whoever they may be, uh, are able to uh, effectively buy all of their inventory in using agri-digital. Um, and then manage that position within AgriDigital. So they are effectively managing in um, the physical grain um, inventory at store at the storage point, um, whether that storage is at their own site or at third-party sites, um, and do a mark-to-market um, in real time as against that position. So uh, the one area that we have not fully built out at the moment is a direct connection into the hedged position. So at the moment, that just needs to be recorded as against or in your mark-to-market, um, but that'll be a feature that's coming in, in the next 12 months or so. So being able to bring in your futures position as well. Terrific. Well, Emma, I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, this has been great. Um, hopefully the, the, the broader AgriFood network can help you out. Um, and uh, for those in attendance, thank you all for joining. Um, 
on the replay, you will be able to see Emma's email. Emma, if, maybe you might want to pop up your email one more time here. Um, yeah, so, so sure. see it. I'll um, do that. You know, um, but as a reminder, we host these calls every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. Um, I misspoke earlier. This month's theme is supply chain, not precision agriculture. Apologies. Um, and we'll have other very interesting entrepreneurs over the next few Thursdays in May. Um, so thank you all for joining. Uh, please check out the recording. Uh, you should be notified when that is ready to go and let anyone know who might be interested in taking a listen there. Um, so thank you all. Hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.